Well, good evening. Got a new video for you, but today we're not going to be repairing anything, but I'm going to introduce something to you that hopefully will keep down the repairs in the future, because this is called the Scan Gauge 3. You know, first of all, I hope when my icon got your attention, uh, because, you know, the real I titled this, you know, Protect Your 8.1 Vortec, you know, you can say this or this. Actually, these pistons here are pistons of an 8.1 Vortec with holes in them that just happened a couple of months ago to a friend of mine and I want I don't want this to happen to you and it's happening more and more because we're not monitoring our fuel trims and unfortunately with workhorse they don't do that for us so it's up to us but I'm going to show you how this tool the scan gauge 3 can monitor those for us and, and it does so much more than that with temperature alarms and fuel trims alarms and engine misfires it, it's amazing what they pack into this one this little tool you know I'm a, I mean I kind of think this tool is it's not optional it's, it should be mandatory it, especially if you own a workhorse with an 8.1 Vortec which 99% of them that's what they have is 8.1 Vortec engine uh, now if the same engine in a Chevy Silverado this is not so much of a concern because in that application, things are monitored better to where you won't run lean. Uh, so let me show you a little bit more. You know, when I get done with this segment, we're going to take this outside and plug it in. I'll show you what all, all it will do. But here it is. It's a, the Scan Gauge 3. And now for years they had the Scan Gauge 2, and I've been using it for probably 10 years. The company's been around a good long time. They've come out with this new model, and it does so much more. And you're really going to love it. Uh, it'll probably take a couple, couple different videos to show you all, all it's, that it can do. So let me show you, first of all, the critical thing that's, that's so vital to us and that I want to point out to you as to why we need this tool. All right, let's go right here. All right, here's a screenshot. This is a, a shot of inside the computer data. I got this from uh, John at Brazzles RV. And with this, you see we've got two columns. Okay, this column is 2005 workhorse with 8.1 Vortec. Over here, we have what, what it looks like inside the computer, what the computer is looking at, uh, the 8.1 that's in a 2005 Chevy Silverado. The key thing is look what's circled in red. What's circled in red are things that workhorse has chosen to turn off and not monitor. Uh, the most important things I want to point out is our fuel trims right there. So those fuel trims are turned off and not monitored. So if you run lean, you will not get a check engine light. And that's very important because if you run lean, just like the picture I just showed you, you're going to get pre-ignition. And pre-ignition causes damage and knocks holes in your piston. And I can, we can go into more detail on that later about what pre-ignition is. But if you notice, you go over here, it is so your fuel trim lean, bank one, bank two, all that is monitored. And there's several other items too that's not monitored. Let's get back here to my pictures. You know, the like here, like the mass airflow sensor. It is also not monitored. You see, it's all turned off. But in the if you have that same engine in a Chevy Silverado, it's turned on. If you have two errors, the light is set. We will never get a light. And if you run lean, that's going to cause cause you all kinds of troubles. That we want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, and with this tool, we can do that. Okay, now let's talk. Let's talk about what can blow up an 8.1 engine. And then I've watched and read the forums and seen a lot of different things that's happened and read people's stories. So one option is sudden loss of coolant and overheating the engine. So say for for instance, like with my um, with our workhorse, we know we have the um, the coolant flows all the way down the frame rail back to the water heater. So that's, you know, I got heater hoses running 20 feet behind me. And if we're cruising down the road and pop a heater hose, it's going to pump that water out really quick. And unfortunately, with workhorse, we don't even have an idiot light that's going to come on to tell us we're overheating. Only thing we have is just a little gauge. And if you ain't eyeballing that gauge every 10 seconds, you ain't going to catch it. So you're going to quickly overheat and damage the engine that way. Well, with this, with this gauge, scan gauge 3, it will protect you. Because one of the settings it has is it has monitors in it. So the way I use it, I got my monitor set so that if, because uh, it's got a digital readout, it'll tell you digitally what your temperature is on that engine. If it gets my, when if it gets 220, an alarm goes off. So if we have a scenario, I'm driving down the road and I blow a heater hose before I cause any engine damage, the alarm will go off and I can react and get off the road and take care of the problem. Uh, the other common problem 
that can happen is you know running lame due to fuel pressure you know a bad fuel pump can happen a plugged fuel filter but of course if that happens we will suddenly start showing a lean condition and the, when we start running lean our fuel trims will begin to climb and then once again that's where the stage will kick in because on our 8.1 vortex we normally want to see fuel trims of single digits and i can go into further what fuel trims are but it's important we need to keep ours normally in single digits unless you own an 8.1 that has a bank system installed where they change the manifold and exhaust and all that they flow a little bit more air so they will tend to flow a little bit higher fuel trim on long-term fuel trim you could run 12 or 15 but that could probably be considered normal if you happen to have a bank system but if you've got a stock or course chassis with 8.1 vortex then you probably should be seeing we normally see like three and four uh, percent on long and short term term fuel trims so that's the other thing that can happen you know with like the fuel supply uh, the next thing can the common thing is the mass airflow sensor and that's kind of the most common thing i see when people call me up i'll talk to them and they're getting maybe they get a knock sensor light comes on sometimes people first thing they do they go out and throw a put on a new knock sensor well that doesn't solve the problem it's sometimes the knock sensor is giving you warning say hey i just heard her knock do something about it and usually the cause of that can be a mass airflow sensor giving wrong data to the computer so it causes the computer to allow the engine to run lean uh, one term is called you know any unmetered air so any air that enters the engine or enters the combustion chamber that the computer doesn't know about so that could happen through like a vacuum leak so a vacuum hose that, that goes from the engine up through the firewall that rubs a hole in it starts sucking air through that vacuum line that vacuum that air is going to enter through the vacuum line get into the combustion chamber and it's not going to go through the mass airflow sensor so the computer doesn't know about this extra air being introduced the O2 sensor will see it and it says hey we're running lean back here so it will tell the computer to add more pulse width to get us more fuel but it can only go so far and we can still run lean um, intake manifold gas it could uh, could be loose loose intake manifold. there's numerous things in, you know intake manifold bolts so it's it's critical data that we need to monitor ourselves because just like I showed more course is not monitoring that for us okay let me show you a few more things you what you can do with this um, of course it comes with the cables mount everything you need but for years I've had the scan gauge too of course the scan gauge too only gave us four bits of data at a time that we could view now with this on every screen so you've got three screens you'll see screen one two and three and on each screen you get nine bits of data so it's incredible the, the amount of data you can get you can also uh, improve your fuel economy it's got a, a sitting in here where you can put in your, you know the size of your fuel tank and kind of you can find it find your sweet spot as far as the um, miles per hour you need to set to get, get the best fuel economy now that's something i haven't played with yet but i'll, I'll do that in the future um, but it is a just an awesome tool so let me um let me show you what's in the box here all right of course you get the gauge itself what else we got here we've got this real nice mount and you got this super strong magnet magnet here you it's with the 3m tape you, you mount it to the back of the uh the, the gauge itself and it snaps on there it ain't going nowhere and you get a cable of course so we'll take this outside hook it up to the rv and just show you how easy it is but before I head outside in the cold, I want to point out something else. You know, I've, I've talked to several people after they blow up their engines, and and they tell me after the fact it usually runs between twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. If you're on the road, you blow an engine up, and you got to find a repair shop, you got to order an engine, get the old engine pulled, the one put in, held up in a motel room for a week or two. It's just a nightmare scenario, but it doesn't have to happen. I mean, the 8.1 is a fabulous engine. You know, these engines I've, I've read where people have them in like delivery trucks and stuff can put 400,000 miles on these engines without a rebuild. So, you know, we can get a lot of use out of this engine with minimal service. The key thing, we just got to keep them cool and not run them run lean and you'll have no worries. So, all right, uh, let's head outside. So you see we're on the run to the dash here. On the left hand side of the steering column you should find your obd2 connector right there it is a good shot of it that's what you're looking for and the cable that comes with the with the scan gauge three is right here and you just plug it up that's all you gotta do now in case you're wondering what this connector is this is for our abs 
So that's what that weird connector is for, in case you was wondering. Now I can't get it back on there. I'll do that later. All right, let's get back up to the top. Okay, so we're plugged up, got everything ready to go. But before I start the engine, I just want to tell you about my plan. So I've been using this gauge now for like eight months, and I've got it set up exactly the way I want it because uh, I've been driving with it and the things I like to monitor and the layout that I like. So well, I'm going to show you first how I've got it laid out and go through some of the settings so you'll see all the cool stuff it does for you. And so then probably what I'll do after I go through this in a couple days, I'll go in there and wipe out, wipe out all my settings and start from scratch. So maybe next weekend I'll, I'll have another video and we'll kind of go step by step. That way the video is not so crazy long uh, with this first video because I want to make several videos about all the different things it can do. I, I thought about making a video where I can um, like introduce a vacuum leak because I talked about vacuum leaks and fuel trims. I could introduce a vacuum leak and just show you visually what happens to the fuel trims, how they skyrocket. That'd be some cool stuff. The engine misfires, you know, checks oil, pre it, oil pressure, all the stuff this gauge can do is awesome. So it's, it's fired up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, try to get, keep my fingers out of the way as we do this, except it has a little tutorial here, and I will we'll play that. It shows you here how you can change the brightness. Let me see, make sure we focus, so you can see it good. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's see, next. And tell you how you can change your gauges. How you can scroll up and down through all the settings. All right, changed. All right, so here's how my layout is. This is the data I want to see as I'm driving down the road. Come on, right. get back here. Make sure you can see it good. That looks pretty good. I'm just checking my focus. Okay, it looks pretty good. So like here we got our short short term fuel trims bank one short term fuel trim bank two um then we got our long term fuel trims that's a more important one your short terms are always fluctuating um but the long terms because i've had this unplugged and stuff it's not giving me my my readings at the moment uh but normally as you're driving down the road you'll notice these will be about three or four but on these long term trims if you're going down the road and you start seeing 15s, 20s, heaven forbid 25, I think it's about, about maxes out at 25. If you see those kind of numbers, you're extremely lean and you need to pull over and see what the problem is. Um, of course, you, we got our coolant temperature and what's so cool about this is we have that digital readout instead of that goofy gauge on the dash because that, that gauge is not so reliable. Um, but a nice thing about this coolant temperature being digital, you can also keep up with things like your clutch fan you can that's another handy thing like our clutch fan should kick in at 205 but without a digital readout you really don't know if it's working properly or not so if you notice your your clutch fan on your radiator is not kicking into like 210 215 or 220 you know the clutch fan is getting worn and it's going to need to be replaced soon so there's things like that you can catch early and it doesn't sneak up on you and right here we got like a transmission temperature for the Allison 5 speed. Now at the moment we still can't pick up the temperature on the Allison 6 speed. But if you got a 5 speed, uh, this will automatically pick up the temperature for it. Now remember on the old scan gauge 2, like this right here, that's the old scan gauge 2. In order to get the transmission to actually get a lot to, in order to get a lot of that stuff, you had to manually put in all these codes. See like there's mass airflow sensor. Where's the yeah, there's the Allison. So to, in order to get the Allison to appear, we'd have to put in those all those long string of numbers by hand. Well, you don't have to do that no more. You just let this do a scan. It picks up all that stuff automatically for you. So here's my main screen. That's what I like to see as I'm driving right down the road. I want, my, I want to check my coolant temperature. And with this, because I got it set, if my temperature goes over to goes over 220, an alarm goes off. If my transmission temperature hits over 200, an alarm will go off. Um, you can see we're in closed loop you can monitor that and you'll notice you know we go closed loop around 200 around 121 when you go closed loop um we monitor oil pressure engine rpms that's on screen one then you got screen two you know so you got more stuff 
you know, we can monitor the mass airflow, manifold pressure, intake temperature, body voltage, all this extra information is, is just awesome for us. Um, and then I'll, I thought about when I get on the road here in a couple of weeks, I'm going to show you how to, with this tool, you can also test your mass airflow sensor. On a wide open throttle, a heavy load, we should be pulling at least 220, 230 grams per second. And I'll show you how that's done here in a week or so. Um, and then there's all, all kinds of other settings, like for your miles per gallon, mileage, and how to, like I mentioned that before, you can, uh, it helps you drive better when you can get better fuel economy. I haven't fooled with that part yet, but it does do that. And let's get in here to some other settings. Okay, the monitors, I talked about the monitors. So like here's like the coolant temperature monitor. So I, I've got it set up here at 220, the alarm will go off. Um, and so, just so you can hear it, what is our temperature now? Well, I'll just, I'll just, wait, 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 wait. It's above 220, let me change it. I'll just change it to 100. So if I'm driving down the road and my temperature exceeds whatever I put in there, this alarm will go off. It'll let us know something's going on. It'll keep doing that till we, till we fix it or say dismiss. So let me go back to coolant temp. Let me put it back to where it goes. Put it back to 220. All right. And save. And like I say, there's our transmission temp. If I was to blow a transmission line going down the road and I didn't know it, my transmission temperature is going to overheat really quick and alarm is going to go off and I'm going to save my transmission. So just think, I'm, this is like an insurance policy. This thing could be so, could save you so much money. It's unreal. Oh, and, and fuel trims. So I've got my fuel trims monitored. So like I mentioned before, we want to see single digit fuel trims. If uh, long term fuel trims, bank one or bank two, exceeds 10, an alarm will go off. And I'll, it'll bring it to my attention. I'll see what's going on. What else am I monitoring? Um, engine oil pressure. If it drops below 10. I think, if I remember right, um, the spec on this engine, our oil light, our low oil pressure light don't come on. I think we get below 5 PSI. I'm pretty close. So it's, it's pretty low. Um, and then we've got uh, misfire count. And this has kind of been odd to me. I noticed... When we did a little trip up to Illinois, we drove uh, 10 or 12 hours. I would, every now and then, about once an hour, I would get a random misfire. Just, just one out of the blue. Don't know what that was about. So, I don't know. Maybe we're, as more people get these and they're, they monitor misfire, it may be more of a common thing. I mean, to me, the engine runs perfect. I never heard, him, heard it miss at all. But, but it's kind of cool to have that, that monitor on, too. So, if it, you happen to get a misfire, you'll... You'll know about it. That could help indicate like if you had a bad spark plug wire, bad spark plug, loose spark plug wire, something like that. You can see a little bit here how the fuel trims act when I rev up the engine. Let's see if we can get some long term action a, a little bit. There it goes. But as you're cruising down the road, you'll see these numbers kind of steady. You'll see them like usually about three and four, long term, short term. So that's what I've noticed over the years. So I think I'll wrap this up and uh, I'll get to working on the second video. And I'll put the link below this video. So you can click on that, check it out, give them a call if you have any questions. But uh, I would highly suggest getting one of these for your, for your workhorse chassis so you can protect your investment. Thanks for watching. You guys have a blessed day. See you. Bye.